What's going on? I'm John. I'm sorry, that was so goddamn corny. Anyway guys, John here. Recently I updated my website with super cheap character commissions. Probably the last time I'm ever going to do commissions. Probably for a very, very long time. Or until I need money again. <laughs> Let's be honest. But yeah, for super cheap you can buy a character commission. And I actually got one. There are 19 slots left. If you want one, I'll put the link in the pinned comment. But for this first one, we need to return to Monkey. So, Klein reached out to me, says he wants me to draw Proximus Caesar from Planet of the Apes, the new reboot series, which I haven't seen, but I hear they're pretty good. So I went ahead and sent him some sketches, sent him this one, and this one, and this one, and he said he likes this one. So that's the one we're going to base the full-blown illustration off of. Let's just go in this new series, Commission Quickies. <laughs> All right, voiceover John here. So for the approach here, I decided to keep building up the sketch in iterative sketches. You know, we make a layer, fill it in, go over it again, delete the layer underneath. Iterative sketching, it's a great way to work with digital art. It's almost like writing a song, if you really think about it. So you get like a key riff, right? Like the song that's playing in the background, but then you start building up around it. You build the drums, the bass, Put it all together, the structure, just slowly build it up over time. Base it off of one key idea and keep building upon it. And that's how I approach my illustrations. It's almost a musical composition in a way. I think it was Wassily Kandinsky, who was an abstract artist that kind of approached it in the same sort of way. Thinking of it as sort of more like a musical composition rather than a visual piece of art. I was uh, liking the way this was turning out, but I was going to need a lot more references. Alright, so I proceeded to detail the sketch a little bit more and, you know, just kind of fleshed it out a little bit. And, yeah, um, I think the design of this character is actually really cool. I was looking at some of the promotional materials. I think the throne they designed for him is really cool, too. Um, I will say that little necklace, that neck piece, is going to be a pain in the ass to render fully. But I do just want to come in here and say thank you guys so much for all the recent support. The channel has been blowing up. Really appreciate all the kind words. And now all the feedback, you know, everybody's in the comments section, hitting the likes, subscribes, and all the buttons and all that. I mean, apparently there's, uh, like, uh, however many percent of you that haven't hit the subscribe button yet, do it, do it now. <laughs> but yeah, it it's, means a lot, guys. Appreciate it so much. Really, I, I'm truly grateful, you know. Um, but if you do want to commission yourself, you know, it's um, only 35 bucks. Limited time, 19 slots left at the time of recording, so get on that. Anyway, I finished up this sketch as far as I would go with a sketch before committing to line work, and I emailed it to the client, and I'm waiting to reply if he wanted any changes or tweaks before I finalize it. So now we wait. It didn't answer yet. Still hasn't answered. Alright guys, so my client emailed me. He said the only change he wanted is to have Caesar looking down. Sort of like he's um, orating over a crowd of apes. And um, yeah, we're going to get right back into it. You like this print? This is by artist Amanda Darko. She's really good. Check her out. Uh, only if you're 18 plus though. Anyway, let's get back into it. <sighs>
Okay, voiceover John, back again. So for the line work, there was a lot of rendering of fur. Caesar here is a furry guy. Not a furry. A furry guy. <laughs> Lots of quick short lines and cross hatching to get the feel of all that hair. The neck piece was, as anticipated, a pain in the ass. The part about it though is that in all the references I pulled up, it was slightly different. I'm assuming it was the case of the studio putting out promo stuff before the VFX artists were actually finished, which actually happens a lot. Uh, in the movie industry. Anyway, I kind of created a culmination of all these elements and put together my own neck piece here. Hopefully the client likes it. There was a lot of rendering going on in the face. Uh, there was actually so many lines in his expressions. Uh, it took a while, but personally I'm satisfied with it. Anyway, question for the comments. Have you watched any of the Planet of the Apes movies? I know of the Damn Dirty 8 clip, and that's about as far as my knowledge of the franchise goes. Take your sticking paws off me, you damn dirty ape! But I know there's been tons of reboots and remakes and all that. Um, I might actually check them out after doing this piece. Moving forward with this piece, the client selected red as a key color, so it's going to have a hotter feel. Uh, if you do purchase a commission on my site, make sure you pick one. A hot color like red and a cold color like blue can make all the difference in the feel of a piece. For this one, the color temperature is on the hotter side, with red being a color that psychologically reflects stuff like war, power, and blood, which fits with the theme of the whole uh, apes rising up. So onward to color. Alright, so um, I skipped over the flat colors because that's just kind of boring to watch, but I did want to show you guys a bit of my process because it has slightly changed, and it's probably going to change again when I eventually switch over to Clip Studio because um, Adobe's on some bullshit. But <laughs> to finish this commission, you're probably going to have the same sort of thing in um, any other layer-based art program. So I'm going to just turn off all the layers because there's a lot of layers in that one. So we got our line art here, right? So the first thing I did was I put in a layer um, of grays, right? I got three layers of grays here. Just call it G123, right? Um, you can call them whatever you want. I essentially, you put down the uh, like local value of each thing, right? His like uh, fur color, right? The little bit of like non-furry skin poking out, right? The crown, the neck piece, the loincloth, right? Just did that, you know, basic stuff, get the initial local value, right? Then I put in the shadows and the highlights, right in grays but here's the thing for uh the shadows i set the layer mode to multiply right that makes um that makes it darker <laughs> more or less um you could probably have something similar in other programs and i did lower the opacity a little bit there's also the highlight layer which i set to overlay which makes it i don't know not as harsh i don't know i think it looks good here's what it looks like normal that's normal and that's overlay and again I adjusted the opacity then I did curves which essentially like tilts the um, how, how do I explain curves it, it like shifts the uh, entire temperature of the image and I pushed it towards magenta uh, you can separate them out um, from cyan magenta yellow and black or um, red green and blue if you're working digitally but I always work in CMYK because there's always a chance you could go to print that's the difference CMYK is print RGB is for screen right so if you're working like animation RGB would be used right so then I did something new I added a soft light layer right obviously I used the red um, like highlight kind of color I used something with a variation in opacity of a soft uh, soft round brush with red and I set the layer to soft light. This is a technique I picked up by Guiaz. You can go check out a video where I tried to emulate his process and completely failed. But this, I am actually keeping in my process. Also this, the color balance, which I just shifted red. It's sort of another, like, um, curve sort of feature, but it pushes it a little bit more. Then I went in and I added the actual flats, right? Now, initially, I it would look like this when I added the flats in. I did sample the actual picture that I showed on screen at the beginning, this one, um, and, you know, to get the fur colors and the loincloth and all that, and I did saturate them a little bit more, just so I could have the um, artwork look a little bit more illustrative, and I'd bring down the opacity of this, right, sometimes a little bit more, sometimes a little less, but this usually pulls out all the highlights and the shadows of the grayscale that you did underneath which helps to, to like emphasize the light in the 3D form. So that's a little insight in my process on how I lay down my flats. Now we're just going to time lapse through the rendering process of uh, highlights and shadows and fur textures and all that. All right, and I'll come back in and add a little bit more as needed. <laughs>
All right, voiceover John coming in here one more time. I just want to say thank you very much for watching this video all the way to the end. I really appreciate it. We hit 2,000 subscribers yesterday at the time of recording this, and, like, I never thought I'd see a number that high. Um, wow. Thank you. Honestly. I had a lot of fun working on this commission. Uh, thank you to the person that ordered it. I really appreciate your support. It means a lot. If you would like a commission for the low, low price of $35, only 19 slots left at the time of recording this, you can check out the link in the pinned comment below. Thank you for watching. I've been John. You've been great. I'll see you again real soon. <laughs>